we're taking a look at the new Google Pixel Watch. It's Google's first attempt at a smartwatch that's got some good points as well as some bad points, but overall, it's not a bad first attempt. I was excited to try the Pixel Watch and one of my biggest worries was about the size. I generally prefer larger phones and larger watches and the main reason being I want a larger display. Now there's no denying that this is a small display with the watch coming in at 41 millimeters for the body and then the display is just 1.2 inches or about 30 millimeters. Now that being said, with the black bezel and the dark themed UI, it quite often gives the impression of a much larger 41 millimeter display and in day to day use, you really don't notice these big bezels. If I put the flashlight on it, you can see the full display, but as I said, when you're just using this for what it is, then it all blends in. The overall build quality of the watch is great, we've got a stainless steel frame along with Gorilla Glass 5 protection, and it's IP68 water resistant. Now generally, it feels strong, sturdy, and very well built. Now there is a small amount of play where the straps connect, but I'm talking incredibly small, and you just don't notice this unless you're pushing them side by side like this. Now personally, I just stick to one strap and I don't change it, but for those of you that do, we've got a quick release system, and this makes the job take seconds. The scroll wheel is sturdy and it works very well. Thanks to the haptic feedback, it feels really nice to use. There's another button above it for accessing the recent apps, and I found this to be pretty awkward to press at first, but it's starting to feel a lot more comfortable after a couple of weeks of use. Now to be honest, the only real time I use this button anyway is when running, as I've got the running stats on the display, and then I can quickly look at other apps or change to the music library and then go straight back to the stats I was looking at. Having a small display it makes it a little bit more difficult to swipe between apps up and down as I'm used to the larger displays but now I generally use the wheel for my scrolling and then I just press the display for the selection. The display has a thousand nits of peak brightness and I found it easy to use even in the sunlight and I've also found this bezel to screen effect is also fine when out in the sun. On the back we've got the heart rate sensor, the blood oxygen sensor and the ECG. The watch is comfortable to wear and overall it's a great fit and I have to say I like the simplistic strap fixings that, that come with the watch. The UI runs incredibly well and it's nice that we can use a mixture of the wheel and the swipes to navigate. It's all a pretty simple control system and as I said the top button brings up your recently opened apps or you can press in the wheel to open the list of every app installed. The wheel can also be pressed when an app is open and this will quickly return to the home screen. Now if we scroll up from the home screen we get all of our notifications if we scroll down, we get the quick settings to enable things like do not disturb, aeroplane mode, setting the brightness, and more. If we swipe left, we get the tiles, and you can also customize these in the phone apps to quickly get the informational stats that you want to see. Even when reading long messages or emails, I find it nice and easy with the scroll wheel to just scroll through all the text at your own reading speed. The great thing about the Pixel Watch is that it's a nice balance between a smartwatch and a fitness tracker. We get the Fitbit ECG, the heart rate monitor along with plenty of sleep analysis. Now unsurprisingly, the fitness side is all covered by Fitbit as Google acquired them some time ago and personally I find Fitbit great for the information I need but there are still some annoyances. It tracks stress, heart rate and resting heart rate along with some mindfulness, exercise analysis and sleep tracking. The thing I don't like is that if you're not a Fitbit Premium member then it does feel like the advertising for Premium is a little bit too overplaced. The free version does everything I need it to and I don't want to pay a monthly subscription, but I still have a premium tab at the bottom that I can't access, along with a constant reminder in other sections that Fitbit have locked out these settings for free users. An ad every now and then doesn't bother me, but I wish we had a different UI for the free users or less pointing out that I don't have premium. Now another problem with all this tracking on a small watch is of course going to be the battery life. It takes your heart rate every single second and the battery capacity is just 249 milliamp hours. Now this is something that actually Actually, has been a lot less of a problem than I expected, but it may be a problem for you depending on when you like to charge your watch. If you don't want sleep tracking, then it's no problem, you just charge every evening, but if you want the sleep tracking, then you're going to have to charge it in the day at some point. I thought I would have an issue with this, but I ran it down to 0%, and I found it can charge to about 100% in just an hour, so I just take it off for an hour when working on the computer, and that's been fine for me. Now, you've also got the option to wirelessly charge, and with so many phones providing reverse wireless charging these days, that's always a great solution. 
Now, personally, I think allowing more customization into the tracking side would have been a better move. Having an accurate graph of your heart rate is great and possibly the best I've ever seen in a smartwatch. But for those of you that don't want that, then it would have been a great battery saver if you could change this to maybe poll every 10 seconds instead. Now, we also need to point out that I haven't been using the always on display either. It's got raised to wake, so I don't really see the point in the display being on unnecessarily. But for those of you that do like always on display, of course, it is going to consume more battery. I also use this watch face here to get the useful metrics on the watch face, but there are a lot more animated ones that you can choose from, and again, these will consume more battery. Also, I haven't been using eSIM either as my network doesn't currently support it, so this is again going to drain more power. But all that being said, my watch lasts me about 24 hours and then I just charge it every lunchtime. With the Pixel Watch app, we also get plenty of customization and we can choose things like the watch face and then even customize the colors. We can customize notifications that go to the watch and generally everything you'd expect from a Wear OS smartwatch. Now, one thing I would have liked to have seen more of is a bit more synchronization between the watch and the phone. I feel like Google are trying to go the Apple approach and making a bit of an ecosystem with the phones, the watches and the tablets and they're on the right path, but there's plenty more to go. For a start, more options that need to be auto synced such as my notification preferences between the phone and the watch and if I put it on aeroplane mode or do not disturb on the phone it would be nice for my watch to just do it automatically. The charger also works well and it's nice and simple. You just place the charger on the magnetic pad and you're done. The magnet holds the watch in place, but to be fair, it could have been that little bit on the stronger side. It's unlikely to move, but if you pick it up from the charger, you can see that it can't support the weight of the watch. The Pixel Watch offers a great set of features though. You've got Google Assistant right there on your watch. It's easily accessible at any time by just holding down the top button. You can navigate maps on your watch, read notifications, and if you're not using the 4G LTE connectivity, you can even download songs for your runs with 32 gigs of storage. Thanks to the great speech to text, you can easily reply to your messages on your watch, and it does of course have the quick reply suggestions as well. For people that want great fitness tracking on top of a smartwatch, then I'd say this is a good choice. I would say the main downside to consider though is going to be the size for those of you that don't want a smaller watch and of course the lower battery life if you don't want to be charging your watch every day. In terms of things like software, as a whole it's running well and as I said I just like to see a little bit more customization in terms of reducing the fitness monitoring frequencies just to save the battery when needed. Now maybe Google will realize this and add these features at a later date but as it stands it's only going to be for those that want the super accurate readings. Now the watch starts at $350 for USA and £339 for the UK and that's a good price for the hardware and overall use if that's specifically what you need. I feel like it's been pushed more to the fitness side thanks to the Fitbit being added so if you want a fitness tracker with plenty of smartwatch features then it's going to be a great choice. If you just want a smartwatch and don't care so much about the fitness aspect then I feel another smartwatch is going to give you more features and a better battery life around a similar price point. But that's it from me today, so as always, if you've got any comments or any questions at all, or if there's anything I've missed, then just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for watching the video, if you liked it, smash a thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice, and I'll see you guys in the next one.